Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. This one's going to be a quick teardown, and it's not a one-way teardown because there's actually data on this hard drive. More specifically, a solid-state drive, and I'm sure by now most of you who have access to solid-state drives have decided to take them apart at some point. Let me just find the correct screwdriver. This is where if I was prepared I would have um, found it already and done the... Um, necessary uh, shenanigans but hey this is me we're talking about <laughs> when is anything ever organized so this is a samson um, 840 pro 250 gig ssd a uh, pretty decent drive actually technically it's not a hard drive but it may be referred to as a, as a hard drive because i'm pretty used to calling them that But they use uh, NAND Flash, which basically uses quantum mechanics to work because it the uh, electrons phase through a particular insulator, which has to be a very particular thickness, which means there's a limited size we can actually make the uh, memory cells down to. Make them too big, they don't work. Make them too small, they don't work. And it's all... Basically, um, magic. That's what quantum mechanics is to me. It's magic. So we open it up, and boom! The circuit board barely fills half the um, <coughs> space up in the case. So let's move the case out of the way, which is metal, aluminium, by the looks of it. Is it aluminium? Let's try it with a magnet. Yep, that's definitely Ali, all right. Aluminium screws are just pure evil. So let's bring the uh, circuit board up closer to where you can see it. So what we have here is customer silicon Samsung controller, more specifically an S4LN021X01-3030, that looks like. Is it that? No, 8030. Oh, 08, that might be the date code. It was made. And it's an ARM processor. Which you should be able to see there if the um, camera lens focuses. Then we have the DRAM, because what these tend to do is they have a DRAM cache. So they can basically store, you know, pointers to where the actual files live so they can actually access it quickly, read it off quickly and write it quickly. Otherwise, these things can bottleneck to the point they are not any faster than a standard mechanical drive. And then we have the actual NAND flash units, which are going to be, because it's a 250 gig um, drive, and bearing in mind this is bullshit units, so, but I'm not do it, but I can't do the maths in my head, so we're just gonna go 250 gig. Because they do it to the nearest thousand rather than what it should be, uh, 10, 24, and then double up from there. <coughs> so, 250, that would be uh, not quite 128, but close enough that individually each chip would be a bit above 64. Because 250 isn't exactly a nice binary number. And there's two of them, and you can notice actually looking at it. There's quite a lot of squiggly traces on the board. For example, these two go through here. And they're actually the data lines uh, between the SATA connector and the actual um, processor. Where it's converted to the old, old school hard drive protocol. This is why um, you're getting a lot of the modern drives which plug in directly into the motherboard for a PCIe um, type connector. That you'd find in a laptop. Because... This has its throughput because mechanical hard drive limits and the limitations of, you know, the protocol that was designed. And interestingly, both of the, one of these could go straight to the connectors. But the reason I reckon they're both going under is so they can length match. And you can see this kind of same thing going on under here between the chips when it comes to the traces that are communicating with the um, NAND uh, flash chips which are, for 
your interest if you can't read them because the lighting's crap. K9PHGY8S7C-CCKO. Also made by Samson because Samson spin their own silicon. And everything else on this looks like just power regulation to... um. In fact, we've got an inductor there, which is defo power regulation. And then, of course, a little chip next to it. So you've got some sort of little um, converter because, let's be honest, a lot of these chips these days use a variety of, like, really low voltages. It's not all just 5-volt logic anymore. No, it's not that simple anymore. There's, like, a bazillion different voltages from, like, 1.2 volts to 3.7 and these aren't necessarily voltages provided by the um, power supply itself. Plus, you kind of don't want to filter off the raw power supplies because they do tend to be a bit on the noisy side. But for now, uh, the next teardown item, when I get round to making the video, is this PC that was donated to me like over five years ago. Yes, it takes me a long time to get round to shit, but hey, that's life. Thanks for watching.